Hello beautifuls, welcome back to my Chanel and hello little biscuit, how are you doing my lovely? Did you enjoy going for your first ever little swim in the sea? Did you like it? I know you were a bit spooked when the waves made noise, but you did enjoy yourself, yes. This weekend I went to Brighton with Biscuit and my boyfriend Louis to see my dad and to also take Biscuit for his first ever little swimming adventure. He quite liked it, but he did get a bit spooked by all the loud noises that the waves make, so there we go. And welcome to another episode of Dr. 90210, Mr. Biscuits. Dr. 90210, yes. Would you like to have six boob jobs? Would you like to have that one for every nipple and then two spare ones? Mm, yes. Beautiful. So, my lovelies, on the last episode of Dr. 90210, we saw someone who had had extensive plastic surgery and they also very much enjoyed going under the needle for a procedure or two, didn't they, Biscuit? Yes, Miss Botox Queen Hoomst. I will actually say, I do feel reluctant to use the phrase plastic surgery addict or the word addict full stop unless someone has assigned themselves that word because it's not something to be taken lightly. Addiction is a serious disease, and I don't really like to make light of that. Also, my loves, in other news, we're doing lots of business this bit, aren't we, Biscuit? In other news, lots of people keep asking me where I'm getting my necklaces from. So this necklace you can currently see on me here is by the brand Restyle, and I wear quite a lot of pieces by them. Anything that looks kind of like gothy or satany or snaky or anything like that. Or even the Moon Girls comes from Restyle. I do also buy a lot of my jewelry from Killstar and occasionally on eBay and Amazon if I I see something that really tickles my fancy, I'm like, oh yes, do you know what? Yes. Quite often they're labeled as like men's necklaces because you know, women are never allowed to wear anything that isn't just, you know, a tiny, 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 tiny little Swarovski crystal. You're being a little fidget bum today, Mr. Biscuits. One of the top comments from the last episode of Dr. 90210 Girls is by Patrick BBZ. Isn't it, Mr. Biscuits? Yes. What are you sniffing? What can, what can you find? And they say, it's a really interesting point about the financial burden of implants. You could be left in a much worse situation if a TV crew does all this to you and then just leaves. That is exactly my point. Every time we see one of these shows and someone is like, oh, I've come in to save the day and given you a lifelong prescription and subscription model to these silicone things inside your body that you have to replace or, you know, complications may occur. Then I feel like that's quite, like, unethical to be like, well, we're just gonna drop this, like, $5,000, $10,000, $15,000 bombshell on you in the future. We don't know when. Good luck. I feel like that is actually quite unethical, and we see that a lot in all of these makeover shows. Extreme Makeover, The Swan, Bridal Plasty, even Dr. 90210 Girls. And I think even America's Next Top Model did it once with like, uh, what's it called? What are they called? Uh, veneers? But they use crowns. So, little Mr. Biscuits, I can see you desperately trying to climb off my lap today. So, would you like to sit on your little pillow and have a little bit of a rest? Get your beverages at the ready, my loves. I am again on the Monster Ultra Rosa today because I'm feeling fruity, zesty, womanly on the go, feminine pink booster. Uh! Deranged. Pop your ohang right into your little naughty ohang hole. Oh, interesting energy in the studio today, my loves. I'm very warm, but I'm not gonna say, oh, it's hot, oh, it's not hot. And let's watch Dr. 90210, season one, episode 11, I believe. I believe this is the penultimate episode of season one. How long's this taken? A year or so? Something like that? How exciting. <laughs> let's watch. It's Dr. 90210, hold a mirror whilst you drive the car. Look, a lovely woman's fillet mouth and veneers on the game. She might be also on the go because it's what? Dr. 90210. Did you like that? That was great, wasn't it? Right. Oh, oh all those birds are dead now. Dead now. Dead. Ma oh, wow. Malibu. My name is Shifa, and I'm having the 31 breast enlargement breast of the belly button. Most of my life, I've been very insecure about my breasts, them being small. I've always wanted them bigger. Not big, too big titty lady videos on the internet. They're definitely not small. So, right. <laughs> I've had enough of that. Okay, <laughs> so breast implantation. A full of seeds, so I can stand out a little. <laughs> Pow! She wants to go, boom, breast. The best thing that can come out of the surgery for me would be the confidence that I would have. I'm a confident person okay. already, but I've always been not confident with my chest, and I think it's gonna change my life and everything around it. 
Yes. So one of the reasons that I actually ended up going with breast implants and the size that I wanted is that I wanted to build on my athletic build already. It would have been ridiculous if I'd gotten like 800 cc's of silicone booby woman because I would have looked like something that was not akin to what I would consider part of my like aesthetic. So I feel like when this patient says something like, oh, I want to feel more confident with my breast size, that to me says something that's like, I've considered why I might want this surgery. I mean, you know, all surgery is valid if you really, 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 really want it. Even if you want to go like bimbo slut fantasy, that's also fine. You just have to be aware of like complications that can arise down the line because of that decision. I feel like wanting plastic surgery to boost your confidence and self-esteem and like align it with your life is probably the most healthy way to look at plastic surgery and not just be like, well, I just want it. I just want lots of surgery. Because I don't feel like people who do that end up being the most healthy, should we say? Should we leave it at that? Yeah, right, let's go, girls. Chateau, she lives in a castle. Talent. No, I still, I'm still working on Hi, this is Jerry Pace. I'm sorry, what? I don't know if anybody's called her. Oh. My name is Jill. I'm Hello, Jill. That I can Jill have McKee. some abdominal reconstructive surgery and scar revision. I'm an Ooh. actress, Tea. singer, and um, this is my agency, Xanax Pass On and Pace, and they've been representing me for Xanax. about a year. This will be tomorrow, Tuesday. If oh, look at the screensaver in the background. Oh, don't you just nostalgia? Easy times. Computing was done with pens and paper. So interesting about scar revision. I might actually be going in for some scar revision myself. So I'm very interested to learn exactly what this is. Cut them out of a certain percentage of things that they can't do. Jill has one scar that I told her would Ooh. help if she could do something about that. Okay. None of her pictures show Wait, a what? something that I told her would help if she could do something about that. This man told this woman when he saw her scar that she should do something about all that to further her career. We've discussed getting plastic surgery to further a career here on the Chanel before. And I always feel like it's a bit of a gray area because like sometimes getting like a little bit of something done can actually really help. But I guess this is technically revision. I wonder how she got that scar in the first place. I wonder if we'll actually get to know that. Hmm. I'm not sure I appreciate a man being like, you should saw that out with surgery though, girls. Cause like any amount of surgery should, should not be taken lightly. None of her pictures show a midsection type thing. So there are certain things in her age group that she's going to lose because of that scar. This right. one should get you 25 auditions for the year, at yeah. least. This should get you 20, right, having the surgery should get you 25 auditions in the year at least. Okay, mm. I didn't realize that that was a thing that happened. Did you realize that was a thing that happened? I suppose we do see like models and supermodels getting surgery, getting like nips and tucks and little things done and then being like, no, I didn't get all that. No, just I'm really highly favored by the higher power. Praise uh, Naughty. And what an excellent time to put in today's Twitch shout out, my loves. And that goes to Never Never Girl. Thank you so much for following me over on Twitch, you stunning woman on the go. And if you want to be in with a chance of being featured in my next video's Twitch shout out, make sure you follow me on Twitch. It is Luxaria Plays. And I stream every Monday and Thursday, my loves. Yes, I do. And with that, back to the scheduled program. Da 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 da. I like the salsa they put in every now and then. Is it Shafa, salsa? I'm not very Hi, sweet. How are you? Oh, she looks panicked. I know like, you're ah! also interested in breast augmentation. Yes. There are four ways to do it. Number right, one, you Dr. can do it through Ray. the armpit. Number two, you can do it through the nipple. Number three, you can do it below the breast. And the last way, and I know you have an interest in this one, through the belly button. The trans umbilical. So I'm, I'm actually going to interject here. I've, I've pressed my pulse button so many times already, my loves, but you'll understand. She's obsessed with it. So originally, I loved the idea of going through the belly button because I thought, oh, that's like a scar-free way. I wasn't thinking about like potential revision in the future. Breast implants are not forever. I know we've had some people in the comments say like, oh, I've had mine for like 20, 25 years and it's been fine. I understand that. That's not generally the case for most uh, implants. In fact, nowadays, you usually sign something that says, you know, you will have to get them redone or relooked at or in some way a second surgery 10 or 15 years down the line. I know that mine came with that and I have mentor implants. Going in through the belly button doesn't leave us like a visible scar on your like chest area. But when you have to have that redone, they have to come out and they can't come out back through the belly button. They have to, you have to have the incision scar here. Let me move this. No, say you have to have the incision scar underneath the tissue. Hmm. I don't know if it's a good idea to go in through the belly button because in the future you have to have a scar here anyway. Unless, can you get them removed through the armpit? I don't know. I don't know. 
doing the breast through the belly button. So the young lady has no new cuts. No cuts on her breast, no cuts below her breast, no cuts in the armpit, all visible. You had a little accident in 1991, right? Right. I have Ooh. a terrible scar on my stomach because oh. I had this is the a scar major episode. car accident a and car accident. I almost lost my life. They had to cut me open to the stomach because I had internal bleeding because oh. I went through the windshield. Jesus. Oh. My God, car accidents are actually genuinely frightening, aren't they? Um, she took it really hard. She was, um... She was just dying out there in a waiting room, waiting for me, and not knowing that, you know, her daughter is kind of making her not. Frightening. I'm lucky, I'm very lucky. I mean, I'm lucky. I'm not supposed to be here today talking to you or anyone. I don't know about that. You know, once Dr. Ray found The universe had other ideas for you. He was just looked at me like, that's not a problem. We don't have to put a, one single, another scar or scratch on your body. What did you have in mind as far as sizes? Yeah, I was thinking something in the C's. I have to agree with you that a C is going to look very, very, uh, very good on you. Oh my goodness, are we actually hearing some sensible things from Dr. Ray actually saying, yes, a C will look nice? Instead of him being like, you know what, double D's, up to your chin, girls, big titty lady videos on the internet. The only thing that takes away from me is just the scar that I have and having small breasts. So I feel like if I can conquer one of those, then, you know, I can even this out. True, 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 if that's how you feel. I feel like it's very important as well to remember that patients have a right to feel a certain way. 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Every day, including a weekend day. I'm going to Louisiana. He works every day until 11 p.m. I don't think I'd want a surgeon to work on me if he was like, I work every day up until 11 a.m. and then I get up and go to the gym and then I do uh, martial arts in my garden and then eat 12 raw eggs um, and then start again at 5 a.m. Like, I don't know if I want all that, you know? Like, I need a well-rested, cognitive, is that the word, cognitive? Like, cognitively available surgeon? You get rid of me for one and a half weeks. Well, we're very excited about going to New Orleans. I'm learning a brand new facelift, uh, oh. much shorter scars. You are gonna look so hot, girl. I'm excited also because we need a break. Oh. Right. Main so thing I expect from our trip to New Orleans surgery. is time. Oh, hello, Haley. We haven't seen you in a while. Us. Since my mom's coming, we're gonna have a bit of time. She got the Rachel there. The Rachel haircut. Do you remember that? The Rachel. The Rachel. Everyone gets the Rachel. No. Our type of test is coming up in a week. After this test, it's over. I'm hoping in New Orleans we're gonna have a bit of time to relax. I really love to oh, be with him all the time, pregnant and now. I love him so much. That's the most important thing to me is just being with my husband. Oh, I don't think that's his most important thing is being with you. Hmm. Can you eat a banana? We just haven't had any time alone since Sydney's been born. Well, that's the thing. When you have kids, you will never be alone because that child needs you desperately. No, you know why, sweetie? Because there's holes at the bottom of it, so the water will come right out. Oh, what look at the phone. With your shirt? I'm looking forward to just Heathered. having a nice romantic dinner somewhere, somewhere five star, which we haven't been able to do because we bring her everywhere we go. Already it's hard with Sydney, but with two, it's gonna be impossible. Okay, you know what I just realized? We're going to New Orleans towards well, the end of the next week. Well, the opposite part of that is to not have children. If they're really impacting your ability to go for five star meals, it's a decision you have to make. You have to put your child first for at least, what, 18 years? I think in America, maybe 21 years because like it needs to be. Although nowadays, to be honest, like you can, you could, I suppose like if you have like an older teenager, you could be like, we're going out for dinner, goodbye. Please look after yourself. And they won't tend, generally won't become a problem. But you know, I don't know your life. I miss what we used to have before he got to this level. We spend so much time together. He now, looks for so can, many reasons to not be at home as well. That. I'm still learning how to give myself <laughs> Adequate family time, adequate learning time, and adequate business time. Having a relationship Dr. requires Elbow. a tremendous amount of energy. Ooh. If indeed in the relationship there are children, that even takes some more of your energy. It'd be nice if he could take some more time off. That's my dream for him. He's just too busy. The demand is too high at this point. I'm gonna run. If I don't run, I'm gonna have to be carried home, okay? How can you make post-op calls at 11.30 at night? Yeah. If one of my doctors was like, we're gonna talk to you about your boobies, but it's at half past 11 on a Friday night, I'd be like, can you not just schedule me in next week in a morning routine? I don't know, I find it a little bit odd.
seems a bit odd that he can't make time for his family. I feel like throughout this show, we've seen the reality TV aspect being like Dr. Ray's inability to manage his family alongside his work. Like, I just don't know if I like the idea of a plastic surgeon working until 11 p.m. every night. And even there, later than 11 p.m., he was making post-op calls at 11.30 p.m. What? What the hell is going on with your eggs? Doctor 90210, let's put her implants in the tree. Rodeo girls. Orchids. That's not an orchid. Yeah. I was very friends. Hi, I'm Dr. Ray. How are Hello, you? Thank Julian you for coming. I'm sorry I'm running a little behind. What's going through your mind? I had completely unnecessary surgery because of a cancer misdiagnosis. I'm now left with an 8-inch oh. scar down my stomach. Um, can't have children. And because of the surgeon just really wanting to rip off my insurance company, he didn't really care how he cut me open or stitched me up. Let me take a look at this. And see Jesus! You see, this is another reason why universal healthcare needs to become a thing because P surgeons are less likely to do all this extra nonsense to earn extra money if they're just getting a flat fee regardless. That is some, is this common? Is this like surgery insurance fraud? Common in places that have like insurance based healthcare? That is frightening. Just goes to show you, doesn't it, that like capitalism will always find a way to scam people. Vision. Okay. <laughs> if you don't mind, I just uh, just have an idea of where we are. Okay, right. so they started above my belly button, mm -hmm. cut me here. So it's a typical midline incision. All mm -hmm. the way down, but see how it sinks in mm -hmm. in the center because of the way he cut through? Mm -hmm. And even when I, he wasn't a plastic surgeon. Yeah. He and wasn't a plastic surgeon. A criminal. <sighs> So we can make it better, we can never make it perfect. This operation, abdominoplasty or tummy tuck, is basically designed to take care, really, of the lower abdomen. I thought that perhaps just liposuction and maybe like a scar revision would be all that I needed. I'll be honest with you, if you just revise the scar, it's mm -hmm. gonna look a little bit better, the same, or? Worse. I've got a lawsuit, obviously. That's quite... That's quite a bold statement, isn't it? If you just get revision, it's gonna look the same, slightly better, or a lot worse. That's not really selling the surgery. Is he maybe upselling a little bit here? If I was Jill, I'd probably get a second opinion just to make sure that what I was getting was exactly what I wanted as a result. I mean, the thing is with plastic surgery, you always have to think of improvements. Never you're gonna get perfection because if you chase perfection, you end up in the realm of the people that I mentioned earlier where they sometimes start to look a little bit uncali valley because something else is going on alongside plastic surgery something else something a little bit more psychological based i've got a lawsuit obviously against these doctors and until it's resolved i'm not going to have the money to do any more cycles of in vitro mm. i'm okay, stuck oh, well. wow i guess that's i don't really have too much too many options uh, oh that's gosh. gonna you know that's gonna weigh on my heart tonight because boy that's kind of a devastating story I just couldn't take the risk with Jill. Uh, I just had to reject her. Yeah, of course I was hopeful. I mean, people are always hopeful when they want something. Jill has a very sad story. I mean, it's a devastating story, but we have to weed out certain types of people. If they're talking uh, about lawsuits, if they have a history of lawsuits, if they are uh, bashing their last doctor, these are all variables which uh, move us to uh, not operate on them. But at times was an interesting take there instead of him being like sometimes there are difficult surgeons or sometimes there are surgeons that are problematic he went with the route of like if they're bashing a previous surgeon i might not work on them i mean i understand like protecting your perhaps your practice reputation or your own personal reputation within industry everyone has bad eggs in their industry everyone does this is why like doing so much research is so important but i guess when it's something like a an insurance base thing of being like you have to go to this surgeon it adds a layer of difficulty i'm guessing but like i'm in the science world and i'm in the makeup artist world both of those have bad eggs in so it doesn't surprise me that there would also be bad eggs in surgery i had a consultation with a surgeon um in 2017 and i left that consultation feeling so deflated and awful and i was so glad that i didn't end up going with them in their practice because i was like that is not that is absolutely not for me i find it interesting that he said there that that then kind of works against a patient, rather than saying like, oh, you know, sometimes there are just bad eggs in our industry. 
we're going to work with you. But the fact that he said, oh, no, they've got lawsuits and they're bashing their last surgeon. It makes it very difficult. We're la more likely to reject them. Says more to me about, like, not wanting to help a patient. I don't know. But I guess, obviously, there are clients that are also just problem clients as well. If you've worked in any human facing role ever, you'll know this. Oh, difficult. Let me know what you think about that in the comments box below. Hmm. Down somebody, it's more or less because I feel very strongly here that I'm not gonna be able to make this person happy. Okay. But I, I, so far I'm not getting the sense that Jill is a very difficult woman. I'm not getting the sense of like, oh, she's very entitled, how problematic. Cancelled! I'm just getting the sense of like, she wants an answer to a problem that someone else has given her, you know? I'll go ahead and get the four by sixes of the, of the negative numbers that I know. And there's no way to predict the future and I believe it was John Lennon said that life is what happens while you're busy making plans. I'm trying to just kind of go with the flow. I'd love to have a career, I'd love to be married, have children, and just have, you know, be able to balance everything. I wonder if Jill ever did. And completely lose my mind. <laughs> That's the first time we've ever seen a surgery refused. I wonder if she ended up going for a second opinion or if she went somewhere else or... I wonder what happened for the rest of Jill's story. Rodeo Girls, surgical center on the game. I'm very nervous. All right, here we go. I'm scared. I'm afraid of the pain. Shifa with her breasts. When I wake up. Hi. Alex is my boyfriend. We met about Hello, three Alex. months later. We moved in together. So we've been living you. together for the last six months. He's very supportive. He, he listens. He's a good thing right now for me. If any doctor had told me that I wasn't able to get this procedure done, I don't know what I would do. I would be very disappointed. Alex, how are you? I do feel like doctors, are like, I don't know. I feel like a breast implant procedure is less complicated than what Jill wanted. But interesting that production were like, maybe we'll ask Shifa here exactly the same question. Like, and what would you do if you were rejected? Obviously, this episode is all about, like, complications, perhaps? Ooh. This episode is called Tough Decisions, so I'm guessing that that means exactly what it says on the... Good heavens. What I would do, I would be very disappointed. Alex, how are you? Good to see you. We're gonna start. He always shakes the man's hand. Picture. So, let me have you stand right up here. Uh, okay, here, here you can even turn the other way if you wish. And right. that way you don't have to feel too... Oh, surgical Alex. stockings, the most fabulous <laughs> outfit ever. No, no, he's not Nobody else matters. You know what else matters. <laughs> right. Um, Alex. I haven't seen you before. <laughs> you are so pretty. I find that a lot. No one minds if I look Oh, I don't want a surgeon to be like, you are so pretty. Breasts, I think that's why I'm having this procedure done. And so with Alex, my boyfriend, <laughs> it's kind of like, I make him close his eyes a lot. Like, shut your eyes and turn off the light and that candle's too bright. <laughs> kind of keep him limited. And I know it's probably not that great, but I think things will be a lot different after the surgery. So It's self-esteem we'll based. We are going to just start from here. I'm not gonna use the belly button because she has so much scar in that area, I won't be able to get through. So I'm gonna use the tip of the scar and do the augmentation to that scar. And that's the wonderful part of this operation. It's been uh, criticized by some who uh, don't... Really so he's changed the original plan? Interesting. Realize the potential. In all fields, new technology is always a little scary and people are a little hesitant to embrace new technology. I wanna protect my patients and I don't want them to be the guinea pig, so I waited for the Botox also initially. I wanted to see if it's safe. Developing a new procedure is a two-edged sword. Anything that new has to go through a trial period. Yes, of course. And the problem in cosmetic surgery is you can't perfect these techniques in a laboratory. That's very true. This cannot be done in vitro. This is the panel right here. It has to be done in vivo, my scientists. She's got a degree. Doctor 90210, we're gonna put the scar in the tree. Oh, look at these gorgeous houses, unhinged. Just money everywhere. Surgical center. Right, here we go, girls. Time well, for me to blur surgery, everything. We decided to use the existing scar. So right. let's look inside of her, make sure everything is in the right place. So this is the tunnel right here. Look inside of her, and make sure everything's in the right place. So as you can see from here, Oh my goodness. Just looks like a piece of steak. Fine. Don't say a piece of steak. Cancelled! This is the first time, I think, in this series that we're watching an endoscopy, which is where they have a little camera on the end of a tube, and it goes inside a certain part of the body, and they have a little inspection as to see the, the, the like, 
what's the word I'm going to use here? I want to say state, but I like, look at the state of Earth. Not like that, but like to see the condition, see the condition of the internal area that surgery may be performed. I have not yet had to have an endoscopy, but I will do when I have my voice done. They will put a little camera on a tube and have a little look at the quality of my voice box and my vocal cords to see what can and can't be achieved. It's a very interesting and very important part of the surgical procedure. We fold into a little right, cigarette-shaped unit. Oh, saline? Saline implants? Oh, very oh. gently placed in here. Gate. Just underneath the skin, not traveling through the intestines or anything. All right, let's fill this well, I'm glad up. we're not so going through the intestines for a breast implant. Except, instead of taking two years, it'll be very fast. One. A little shorter knife. Okay, now let's put an implant on the other side. in the saline. Oh, wait, hang on, what was that? Ah, interesting. So she's getting 435 cc's of saline, I believe, on each side. Just for context, I went for 375 on each side and I am now a D, so I think she might be ending up a little bit bigger than a C. She's gonna look absolutely drop dead, perfectly beautiful. Drop dead, Is that to me, her frame looks to be a bit smaller than mine as well, so she might end up looking really busty for a while until they settle in. I'm glad she's woken up okay. None of this shaking, none of this screaming, none of this confusion, none of these smoking complications we saw in an earlier episode, which was like scary to watch. She seemed to just wake up and be like, done. So now we're also meeting the third patient of this episode. I guess because there was a rejection, maybe that's why we're seeing a third person. My name's Elza. I'm what you would call an aspiring actor and singer, entertainer. Nice yeah. to meet you. I'm okay. Have we seen a, we saw a man get eye bag removal before, didn't we? And he was also in the same industry, acting and entertaining. Interesting. So we're definitely seeing a correlation, expect, well, maybe through the guise of this show and through the guise of the show alone, of entertainment and plastic surgery. And I wonder now if the case is social media and plastic surgery, because I don't think I know a single social media person, influencer or otherwise digital content creator in my life who hasn't had a little bit of something done. The camera, friend or foe. You're having a fever dream. Today I am auditioning to be one of the singers uh, at uh, this very popular restaurant here in LA. Are you ready? Yeah, sure. Notte giorno, intorno, girando. Would be a burden lifted. She's an opera if woman. I could lop off a lot of the extra weight that I have. Oh, My don't... weight has had, uh, is, has been a stopping point for employers. Okay. I do, the, the idea of lopping off weight, that's a very, that's a dark place to the mind to go to. I've been considerably heavier than where I am now, and I have definitely looked down at my body and just gone, wouldn't it be nice if I could just remove that? That'd be great. And I feel like that's such a negative way to look at your body. Unfortunately, it's one of those things that kind of comes with the territory of dysmorphia and dysphoria. You just think, cut it off and the problems will go. But a lot of the times the surgery has to be accompanied with a form of therapy in order to really understand that, you know, you're never gonna get a perfect outcome. You're just going to hopefully get what you perceive as an improvement. Thank you. Thanks for coming here. So his weight has been a, like a, a cutoff point in his career. That's so sad. Where is Colin? Doctor's office. I'm going to see Dr. Yamini to uh, see about uh, tummy tuck Flip -flops or liposuction. In a surgical I've office. I've heard a term called a full body lift. A full body Hi, lift. Hi, Elza. How you doing? Oh, Dr. Yamini. Right. Ellen You've Bogan. Been quite a bit. All right. Uh, so refresh my memory a little bit about what you've been through as far as the whole Cushing problem. I had a really rare illness called Cushing's, Cushing syndrome. You have a tumor, uh, a benign tumor, somewhere in your adrenal glands. So I was up to about 295 pounds. Oh my gosh. I wasn't able to think clearly or speak. It was very touch and go for a while. I only had a few hours to live at one point. So fortunately, I was treated. Okay, so this is about as uh, worse as you got. There are a lot more intense sort of stretch marks than um, normal people get without tumor. I'm gonna examine you. I'm gonna see if you're fit to undergo some type yes, of- Yes, I wonder if this is like a complication. Get in the acting field and everything. Yeah, you know, Denzel doesn't look like this. <laughs> uh, we'll get you there. You want to improve the contours of the body. You have excess skin. 
Okay, you have excess fat. I calculated your body mass index, the BMI. You have a, a BMI of 38, which puts you as significantly obese. You could uh, quite conceivably do a complete lifestyle change as far as changing your diet and at the same time really aggressively pursuing an exercise. Now what that will accomplish is you'll notice that everything in life will get a little easier. Once uh, we reach that stage, you're going to be a much better candidate. If we were to attempt something like that right now, okay, uh, it would only be safe to do so much surgery and the degree of change we can accomplish, it's not going to give you all the satisfaction you want. I think most of what I told him, wow. he already knew. He's not an ideal candidate yet. Mm. We, uh, That's sad, isn't it? I do feel for people who have <sighs> had these kinds of things. I went for a consultation and I wasn't an ideal candidate just yet for my FFS back in 2018. So I myself went on a weight loss journey to try and put myself in a very good position so that I could get clear outcomes that are more aligned with where I needed to be mentally. I undertook that journey and ended up losing about 48 pounds. I have put a few back on since because I had a whole year of recovery and didn't really get to use the gym very much or pay a lot of attention to my diet. It is difficult to hear but ultimately plastic surgery again is not an answer to a question. Quite often it's a tool to help you on the road to an answer or to, a, to an improvement that you would want to do. It's one of those things where surgery isn't a silver bullet. And I feel like a lot of these shows back in the day, this was what, 20, 2009, 2010, something like that. A lot of these shows, the earlier ones, Extreme Makeover, The Swan, um, even Bridal Plastic to some extent, showed plastic surgery as like, oh my God, just come in on your lunch break and you get this and you walk out a new woman, no further, like anything else needed. And that's just not the truth. It is a tool in an arsenal of ways to improve your quality of life. It is not the single answer in most cases. I mean, medical surgery is a bit of a different thing when it comes to specific, or specific medical procedures. Like you can't exercise your way away from certain types of medical procedures that you may need to undergo. My heart goes out to this guy because I've sort of been there myself. Talked about the message loud and clear here. Yeah. When Dr. Yumini said, I wasn't ready for surgery yet. I had kind of mixed feelings. It was disappointment, yeah. Yeah. but at the same time, was, I was happy to know, yes, surgery is an option. As much as I've been through, there's still a lot of work that I need to do, and yes. I can't really fall back on, no, oh, this happened to me, you know, I need to get focused again. Yes, 100%. Oh goodness, we're seeing so many refused surgeries today, girls. Yeah. Okay, so it really is a case of taking, like taking the hit really. I feel like when I'm rejected for something that I know that I really, 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 really want, it is very difficult to understand that. And it's another step of that is to, it's very difficult to not internalize it and then beat yourself up about it and be like, well, if I wasn't like this, maybe it would be fine. Obviously being a trans woman myself, like I've had these internal conversations. I've like my whole life, I've been kind of plagued by this thing of like, I'm not good enough. I'm never gonna do anything with my life. I'm not gonna be anything ever. Ugh. And they do overwhelm you. But this is why I feel like therapy alongside surgery in a lot of cases makes most sense because it arms you with management techniques of your own psyche. Because sometimes if we let our own mind run amok with us, we go to some really dark places and those dark places are not helpful. I am, however, a fan of saying, feel the feelings, feel the emotion, let yourself actually process this thing and that will help you to move along your path, whatever your pathway looks like. It's easier said than done though. A hundred percent easier said than done. Dr. 90210, is that tree also gonna be rejected? Beverly Hills, a handbag, a bag in the hand, another handbag. What's with all the bums and handbags? Today I'm taking my Taekwondo, Taekwondo test. Oh yes. I've told him that after this test, it's over. Uh, he's gotta put Taekwondo on the back burner. Anyone? He's not going to do that. The Dujou. Paro, you missed that. Should be a thumbs in, not thumbs stick out. Then you're breaking thumbs. One more time, faster. Three. Thumbs in. Don't ever tuck your thumbs like this, because you'll break your hand. Seven, eight. Jab and drop. One more, faster. Two. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, he... Oh! Oh! 
Oh! Am I gonna be a bit mean here? I don't mean to be a bit mean, but I thought he would be a bit better at this than he is. What am I being? A total bitch! But you know, he has been quite problematic in earlier episodes, so I think I'm entitled to maybe one or two snipes as a little treat. <laughs> treat yourself to a little slur. Slow, speed, and stop. Yes, sir. I'm thinking, I flunked. Here I am. I have to come back in three months and take it again. Here! Oh, pow! Blam! Nah, I probably broke my foot, you know, but uh, all good things in life hurt. Martial arts gotta break some bones to make them tough. But also, kind of true. I remember, oh, so I have a black belt in karate, but when I was taking karate lessons, whenever I do my assessment or grading, there was always a thing for me where I just couldn't get the moves absolutely finessed perfectly. One of my constant critiques was that sometimes I was a little bit sloppy in my fluid of motion, and that kind of makes me go, I mean, I was like a child at the time. I was only like 12, but like, I don't know. It's still a bit like disheartening to hear. So I do kind of feel that because obviously you really want this. A lot of this episode is like, I really want this and I'm not doing well. How interesting though, because he may also be rejected in this tough decision as his patients have been in their tough decisions. Oh, tough decisions all round girls. Should we call this video something like, oh, tough decisions under the knife. <laughs> My truth. Sucking dick and cock. Do you have more snapping? Yes, sir. It needs to very be snapping. Overall, I a snapping it. turtle. He did a very good, so I passed him oh. all, all, all around. Okay, passed, well, yes. no rejection. Oh, he gets his little grading tape. Oh, I remember that. Flowers for the lady. Be quiet, I'm talking to my wife. Shush. Why would you phone your wife in a flower shop if you don't want her to hear? Oh. I'm not quite spill at all in my car. It's okay. The thought that counts. Oh, oh see, see, see what I'm saying? Oh, oh, oh like a race horse. I've got a bucket of piss. I have complicated feelings towards flowers. I don't know why, and I don't know if anyone else is going to agree with this, but I am a little bit like, I like getting flowers, but I'm also like, this symbol of my love I've plucked from nature, and it's going to die in seven days, just like my love for you. Like, I don't know, it feels a little bit like that sometimes. I don't know if that's just maybe my ADHD being like, let's think about all the problems and overanalyze everything, because actually you might hate me. I'm melting! I'm melting! Whereas sometimes I feel like a nice potted plant or a little succulent, even though Sometimes they're not as like, wow, as an entire bouquet of roses. I quite like an artificial plant, but that raises a whole different question, doesn't it? About like, the ethics of plastic plants. Can you get high quality artificial plants? That's so nice. I want things that don't exist. I want a dragon made of black roses. It was so nice that he brought roses over after Taekwondo as a little celebration that he passed his, his exam. I'm sorry, I took so long. It seems more like a bribe than a celebration. Uh -huh. Well, from now... You'll get a hug too! Wait, what? I oh, took so long to get home. Well, from now... You'll get a hug too! Until the baby is five oh, months precious. old. I'm yeah. putting you on a weekend schedule. He's not allowed to go to Taekwondo for about the next month, month and a half. He's okay, past six his belt weeks. now, and I just want him to myself. Oh my god! I don't get the vibe Look that he will. You. you are a big man! I just want to spend more that time with massive car. because I love him so much. Take the chair and think about what you've I done, the like naughty chair! selfish sometimes by not letting him go to Taekwondo or not letting him do different things, but I just can't handle being apart from him, really. I love being with him every second. Someday we retire. Ooh, difficult, so difficult, difficult decisions I'm because, like, in this situation, the father has to provide for the family. But also, I do feel like a wife has a right to say, I need to spend some time with my husband as I have your spawn growing inside me. And we also have another spawn running about. Don't we, Biscuit? He does not care. Looking forward to New Orleans. So I'm really looking forward to spending that right. time with him. Right, is the next episode in New Orleans? Just some of the things that I guess most people take for granted. I'm just looking forward to doing that before I have and the second baby. And off they go. Bye. No? Hello, back again. <laughs> Hi, come back. Oh, post off. They look good. Yeah, I'm happy with them. <laughs> okay, stand up there. Perfect. Okay. Oh, wow, okay, she is bigger than a C cup. That is so much bigger than a C cup. Okay. Good about my surgery. I think it gave me more confidence. I love they look great. You know, looking at myself. I love myself in shirts and everything. Look else. at those contours. Good? Yeah. She looks great. Do you want to see her before and after pictures? pictures? 
Because he's number four. And then this was today. I bet he's like, yes! Oh! <laughs> 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 what the right. On the beach, she's on the game. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I haven't had to go get a new wardrobe because I like everything fitted and it makes it look even better and sexier and more appealing. Do you know, that was actually quite a surprise that I had as well, was that I was somehow thinking that I would have to go and get like brand new everything to fit my new chest size. I didn't. Just everything that I already had started to look a little bit more voluminous, which is kind of the point, I guess. When in the surgery, I was kind of nervous. Oh, about they look the really nice. I didn't know what to expect. You know, you get all these CC numbers and stuff, and I'm actually happy with the size. So I was very surprised. And when I looked at them, I was kind of, oh, wow, that's me. Very voluptuous. <laughs> so I was kind of almost looking at somebody else. Mm. The new beauty. Oh, yeah. well, it seems. <laughs> That's I have something now that I haven't had and always wanted. Wow! Wow we that is bigger than a Z cup! On the next oh, well episode. that's it! That's the end of the episode, girls. My goodness, I've got some thoughts. So, my lovelies, I've got some thoughts on this episode, haven't I, Mr. Biscuits? Yes. It's interesting to see so many rejections because I feel like a good part of being a surgeon is knowing when and when you shouldn't do certain types of plastic surgery. It is difficult for patients to hear. It was difficult for me to hear what I needed to do in order to get the best possible result. But also, I've said this before, you can get second and third opinions, but if everyone's saying the same thing, you kind of have to pay attention and put your health first, don't you, Mr. Biscuits? Oh, you, look at this. Oh. Hello, are you sleepy? I do also want to say that Shifa went in to Dr. Ray's office and was like, I want to be a C. There is no way in hell that when she came, when we saw her in that post-op section that she was a C cup. I know that there is like a variation between what a C cup might look like at different uh, like body sizes, but that's not a C, that's a very full D. I mean, I'm a D cup now, I got less implants and I had less starting material, and I'm of a slightly larger frame than Shifa, so she does not have, she, she's not got a C cup, put it that way. No, little biscuit, no. This episode has been particularly interesting, more from like a, I guess like an administration point of view, rather than like actually seeing what happens when we go under the knife. It's nice to see a show that was on TV actually saying like, oh, these patients shouldn't really get this surgery just yet, or they're not a right candidate for it just yet. I must admit the situation with Jill was a little bit different. I still feel a little bit like you should be able to say if a surgeon has botched you, like you should be able to say to another surgeon that, you know, previously a surgeon botched me. But I can also understand from like a professional standpoint that like lawsuit can be a scary word in certain circumstances. But I hope that Jill went off in a different place and tried for a second opinion or even a third opinion and sort of got more of an answer to what happened with her really because it's kind of scary the idea that a surgeon would fraudulently do an operation on you to make more from an insurance claim like that's something that in my life I've never even had to consider and I'm wondering if maybe like in America, that's a thing that you have to consider like actually like genuinely actually have to spend like mental capacity like concerned about when it comes to surgery. Well, my lovelies, let me know what you think about what we've seen in today's episode of Dr. 90210L. Once again, it's been a particularly eye-opening episode. I feel like this has been a very well-rounded series when it comes to plastic surgery, but also a little bit scandalous at times. Let me know what you guys think. I'm very excited for that. Yes, Mr. Biscuits. And with that, my lovelies, it's time for the Patreons. You can see yourself scrolling past on the screen here, can't they? Yes. And once again, I want to say a massive thank you to my top tier Patreons. Orko Samoji, Beebles32, Shell Herman, Christy Crownover, Christina Kyle, ContraPoints, Danielle, Elizabeth Stone, Eric Castillo, Fable and Flourish, Jen Martin, Jennebeth Herman, Caitlin Wright, Laura Jane, Laura Jane again, Les Banana, Lizette Cares, Millie Hammond, Min Min TM, Mariah Sherman, Novembrix, Paolo Rivera, Ryan Vita, Slampire Queen, Steffi Tech, The Chaos Collective, Victoria Carella, and Zoe Sevier. So, my lovelies, I'm going to leave it on the note of. I think I've said it before, but I'm gonna say it again. If a surgeon doesn't necessarily give you an answer that you want, that you get a kind of like a little bit of like a funny feeling about, that you're not quite sure, you don't really know how that is, 
get a second opinion and maybe even get a third opinion if you really feel you need it. But if every surgeon is saying the same thing to you, maybe consider their advice. And with that, my loves, I'll see you in the next one. Yes, I'm a little biscuit. Mm -hmm.